Exactly. I mean, I was, I was just, I mean, it's just luck, isn't it? You know, I, I was in Formula One in the 70s, 80s, and, and those were the two decades where you had most freedom, uh, mainly with where you put the major masses in the car. Once the regulations told you where the driver had to be, the fuel had to be, and the powertrain had to be, you're stuck. In the early days, I mean, you could shift the driver backwards and forwards, uh, fuel, engine. How do you feel now in this little retrospective when you see all these cars that you've designed and built? Well, it's now a very emotional experience seeing, seeing everything together, obviously. It's, um, I think it would be the same for anybody, whatever discipline you were in as a designer, you know, just seeing your whole life laid out, in front, <laughs> your life's work laid out, laid out in front of you. It's, um, it's very, very emotional, yeah. And probably exhausting in your own mind when you look at the number of cars you designed. Yeah, when I look at the 70s uh, room, if you like, I just I can't believe where I found the energy to do to do all that and run the team and engineer both cars at every race meeting and go to every test and build the Mini Bug and, and build the Decadnet and the 750 Formula car to and go the racing. <laughs> it's like I can't, I sort of can't believe it now that I had that amount of energy, but I've never slept very much and I still don't. So I think that's. Um, how many hours do you sleep? I sleep about four and a half hours. That's absolute max. And yeah. do you go to bed late and get up early, or how does uh, it work? Yeah, yes, I go to bed late, get up early. Yes, I'm, when, at, I'm at work between half past six and seven every morning. And when is your most creative then, time? In the morning, definitely. Yeah. Pencil to CAD. Uh, it still works really well. I still do all the concepts for the cars on on a drawing board with pencil, and I've got a bunch of very talented people who know how to operate CAD machines, which I don't. And, uh, and they're very used to converting my pencil drawings into, into um, CAD. One of the things I love most here is Gordon's garage. I didn't realise you had that many cars. I knew you had some nice ones. Come on, pick a, pick a couple out of there that your favourites. Well, the favourites from a driving point of view are the two Elans, for sure. Uh, that's still probably the best sports car I've ever driven, um, including the F1. It's just the feedback from the controls is, is mind-boggling, really. And I'm interested to hear you say there on the plaque that the Elan was a benchmark for you when you were doing the McLaren Absolutely, I tried F1. to hit, I tried to get that steering feel and I, I missed it. The F1's good, but it's not as good as an Elan. And? And, well, you know, it's a difficult question because I like... But you, I you drive all these cars, right? I do, I do, yes. Apart from the 48 Sprint car because I can't get my foot on the brake pedal. <laughs> but they're modifying it for Fair me. Fair enough. They are modifying it for me and I want to drive it. How about that I, uh, I, Cortina? I, yeah, the Cortina is, from a nostalgic driving point of view, that really gets me going because it, I, w that's exactly what we did in the 60s was bore and stroke them, put them on Webers, yeah. cam, head, exhaust. That's about 130 horsepower and it's so much fun. And on the other side of the fence, the Formula One cars, if you were just walking around now, where would you gravitate? It's, it's again, a difficult question because they all mean the favourites. I've got three or four favourites, but they all mean slightly different things to me. Mm. I still love the 44 as a piece of engineering because it, it, was, it was the car that simplified Formula One cars again. They were getting hugely complex and mm. that went really simple and it won the first race. So that's really important. I also love the 52 because it was the pit stop car. Beautiful car too. And it's, a, it's quite a good looking car mm. and it was a massive gamble on moving that much weight backwards and dumping side pods. I mean it was a huge gamble. And the fact that it paid off and we won the championship is important. And it's funny and seeing all those pictures of Charlie and Herbie in there as well. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. It's like that's what I say. This is more like a reunion. This this event to me because I'm, you know, getting back with all the old folks. How hungry are you now? You've four hours sleep, I know. You're obviously, mm. getting up early still. But how how does your brain work now in terms of getting oh, through the I'm, day? I'm, <clears throat> I'm, I think I'm in the best period of my life with ice cream, because finally I can put something back. All the fun. And, and, the, and the lovely times I've had in racing, everything you see here, I've now got to the point where I can take that technology and all that knowledge and give it back to the everyday motorist. And wow, who, who gets to do that? Normally you get to this age and you go, well, I've done pretty well. I think I've put my feet up. Mm. But actually to come up with, um, with taking Formula One technology and bringing it down to something that's affordable, that anybody could use and, and have the benefits of the safety and the lightweight, Wow, that's a great way to... Well, I was going to say stop, but actually now I'm talking about <laughs> doing my own cars again. So. Well, I love the way you've got the weights in red everywhere. That's like the most well, important stat in every I car. don't know whether <clears throat> anybody got it, but that is one formula. 
that's what it is. Exactly that. Gordon, a great pleasure. Just to finish with, I'd just like to know where you're at with music now, because you were always ahead of the game there with The Clash, with Bob Dylan, whatever was going on. Where are you at now with music? There's some really mm. good. We, we had a bit of a desert for a decade, actually, <laughs> but um, I do a compilation tape every year. Tape which, or download? Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, I beg your pardon. It started as cassettes. I'm on volume 41 now. It's CD, of course, now. <laughs> Um, and it's called Oral Attractions, and I, I started making cassettes to play in the car because I don't like albums, and I'm on mm. volume 41, and what that is, is all the good new bands um, I've heard in the year, mixed up with some old favourites. And last year there were so many good new bands, I actually did a volume 40 and 41, so there are a lot of good people out there, but you really have to dig. They're not usually the popular bands. You have to go a bit deeper than that. But there's some good bands. So out where there. do you do that digging? Do you actually uh, go to live I, gigs? I subscribe to one music magazine, mm -hmm. and I have done for 20 years. And they've got the sort of balance that goes on in my head with music. So if they say something's good, generally it is. One more question. How many T-shirts did you have in your loft when you decided to bring them down here for this well, extravaganza? The T-shirt thing's really funny because. Uh, Jenna, who's been responsible, my, one of my PAs who've been responsible for putting this together, she said to me, you know, we should dot some T-shirts around. In, <laughs> this is before we had the warm-up room in, in mind, around here, from the period, you know, how many do you think you've got? And I said, oh, I've got in those films of suitcases upstairs, I have no idea. Probably a couple of hundred. So she said, do you mind if we come over and sort them? So they did, and I've got 980. <laughs> 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 and I don't consider myself a collector, it's just, Every time I went to a gig, or every time I went to a new Grand Prix circuit or a country, mm -hmm. I bought a T-shirt. And so. Bernie never used to mind you wearing them at races no, either, did no, he? No, he was Bernie. Bernie was great. Yeah. No yeah. team uniform. Not at all. Regime at no, all. No, that was very free. Um, Bernie knew who I was. Didn't mind. We got on like a house on fire. When I went to McLaren, I had it written into my contract that I could wear anything I wanted to outside racing.